Hi everyone. Um, I have the privilege, well my name's Dan Anderson. I and my wife Katie were missionaries of yours, Evergreens. Here in Peru, we've been here the last almost nine years with Kids Alive International. But I have the privilege this morning to talk uh, about John chapter 16. Uh, really cool because I just went through John uh, just in my personal um, time, uh, about a, in the last month, and I'm currently going through it with my family. So just talking through, you know, a few verses at a time with my kids. So I'm really excited about it. Uh, but first, a little update on us. Uh, where obviously the virus and how Peru has reacted to it has really impacted us. Um, there's been a very strong lockdown here. Um, a good part of that still remains, although they're opening up new businesses and there's more and more happening. But of course, we've been consumed with that for the last close to three months. Um, since that all started. Uh, we're doing well though. Um, five ministries here that we are overseeing and taking forward and of course in the middle of trying to figure out how to do that in a situation radically different than when we started. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of uh, what really stood out to me with this chapter. And I love the chapter. I love the book of John. It's my favorite book of the Bible actually. Um, but I just want to start reading uh, verses 7 through 11, where Jesus says something that I think, uh, first, my first thought when I see this, I scratch my head. He says, but very truly to you, I tell you it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me about righteousness because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer, and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. That first part, truly I tell you it is for your good that I am going away. Um, for the disciples that sure wouldn't have sounded good. And then for us too, I mean, I reflect on it. We're, um, we're, what are we looking forward to most to Jesus' return? And, uh, and, and Jesus here in the flesh, most amazing thing that's ever happened. But Jesus says, this is good for you that I'm going away. The advocate is going to come to you. The Holy Spirit, our counselor, God with us. And it made me think, it makes me think about one of uh, the names for Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. It makes me think as well about biblical history and just how um, you can see God creates this world and puts us here and sin separates us from God. And then you see through the biblical account this, this uh, story of God, um, of God breaking that, um, that barrier and bringing us back into relationship with him. And it's interesting to see uh, the account with Abraham and then the, um, the pueblo of Israel, the, the, um, the people of Israel, and their, how God, through the temple and through his relationship with them, takes them a step closer to that relationship that we, as people, as, as human beings, as we lost with him. Um, and then you see when Jesus came, and there was this whole new and better and closer relationship, and Jesus, through his death and his resurrection, open the doors to us to have a to open the doors for us to be reunited with the father to be reunited with that relationship we had lost with god and it's better and so and it really makes me think so it's better that um for jesus to go and that the advocate would come to us um that's something to really think about that's something to wrap your minds around um and of course we know that we're also looking forward to a future event um, to Jesus coming back. We know that someday um, every tear will be wiped away, every knee will bow, um, and so someday it's going to get even better. That relationship with God, which was fractured, is going to get even better. Um, I, about three years ago or so, we had a family visit and a really encouraging time with them. One thing they said to us before leaving, they said, remember, when you walk into a room, and when you're faced with a situation, you don't know how to deal with it. Remember who walks in with you. And that had a real impact on me because it's not new information. You know, it's not new information that, that God is with me, that I have the Holy Spirit with me. But for some reason, it stuck with me that time. And since then, many times 
I've been confronted with the situation. It's not always having me walking into a room. Sometimes it's just, oh God, how am I going to deal with this? And how am I going to step, how am I going to handle this thing? I don't know what to do with it. And I remember those words that um, when I walk into a room, remember who is walking into that room. God is walking into that room. God has promised that he is with me. And I do, I have found that as I remember that I'm not the important one walking into that room or walking into that situation. I know who is walking in, who has promised he will be with me, is with me, and who is working in that situation. It has brought me a lot of confidence in the past few years, but also not just confidence. I go in with fear and trembling sometimes, of course, but I have seen God at work and I know who's walking into that room. Um, I want to go ahead and read the last verse in this chapter. 33. And this is the reason why we can have such confidence um, in, in that walking into that room. It's verse 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Um, the reason for confidence is that he has overcome the world. The only other thing that I wanted to, to bring out as well is that that when I walk into that room, one thing I desperately want is, is, um, is to rely on his goodness and his strength and his presence. And so I want to make sure that the words that I speak, I don't want those to be mine. I want them to be his. And so um, the fact that he is with me, Holy Spirit is with me, um, that means that it's not just important when I walk into that room, but daily as I go to him and as I get closer to God and as I, um, as I learn from him, he gives me the words to speak in these situations. Um, so anyway, that's what I reflected on. That's, that was some of what stood out to me. Um, just how strange it could be that Jesus going to the Father could be a good thing for us and, and what that really should mean for us, um, that we have the Holy Spirit with us inside of us and, and what that should mean for us now 